Welcome to Art on the Brain. This is Kelly Drake and today I'm going to talk about mixing colors with acrylic paints. I'm going to show you three different ways to mix. And first I'm going to talk about which colors to use. These are the three main primary colors we learned to use when we were probably in elementary school. I'm using a cadmium red, an ultramarine blue, and a cadmium yellow medium. Um, these are very identifiable as primary colors. I'm just going to show you that when you mix blue and yellow to get green, yellow and red to get orange, and blue and red to get purple especially, um, you don't get the pure vibrant colors that you usually think of when you think of green, orange, and purple. Like with green, you do get kind of a nice earthy green that would be useful to use when you're painting outdoors. And with the orange, you do get um, kind of a natural pumpkin, not really a vibrant, bright orange. And now when you're mixing purple with the red and blue, you can see that you really don't get purple. You get more of a, almost a brick red. So here I'm adding a little more blue and you think you might get kind of a violet color, but what you get is almost a real dark eggplant. So these are the colors I recommend when mixing a lot of colors from just your three primaries. A light yellow, more of a pinkish red like magenta, and then a cerulean blue. So now I'm mixing up the green with the blue and yellow from these new colors, and you'll see that it's a much brighter, more vibrant green. Mix in a little more blue here to match that other green I have up there, get a little closer to get more of a darker blue-green. And now I'll bring a little bit of the red into the yellow. So the red's a much stronger color, so you just need a tiny little bit to mix into that yellow to make an orange. And though it does look pretty similar to that pumpkin orange on here, it actually is a much more vibrant, bright orange in reality. I'm mixing the magenta and the cerulean blue, or a cyan blue would work well too. And look at the purple that I get from these colors. Now again, it's just red and blue, but it's the right red and blue. Um, mix a little more blue in there to get more of a violet color. More of a blue-purple. And voila! The cerulean blue and the quidacridone magenta make a really beautiful violet blue. Now just to show you that you can use these colors also to get the earthy colors, which I'll probably do another video on later, um, but just mixing a little bit of that orange in with that violet blue, and I can tone down the purple, I can take the intensity down and make it more of an earthy color just like I did up there. And if I had a little more blue and magenta in there, I could get it darker. So now I'm using a little matte medium. This is the, another way to mix colors is to lie down transparent layers. And this is called glazing. You can also uh, use, Golden makes a really nice glazing medium, and you can get it in glossy or matte, just like the matte medium or the gloss medium, and it even makes it a little more transparent. It also dries a lot slower if that's something that you would like. So now I'm just laying the colors down, just mixing them with that matte medium to make them more transparent, and just lying the colors down one at a time. So I've got the yellow down, I'm going to make a blue bar here. And I'm not too concerned with it being uniform all the way across, in fact I kind of like those stroke marks and a little bit of dark and light mixed in there. Um, yellow is more difficult to do that with, the lemon yellow but the blue works very nicely this way, and so does the magenta. So just mixing a little bit of matte medium in there and, and just getting it down on the paper. It doesn't have to be neat and tidy for this exercise. Now I've let it dry, or dried it with a uh, blow dryer, and now I'm just taking the same colors and brushing them over the top, mixing them with the matte medium so that they're transparent, 
and then putting them in a bar across the top across all three colors and you can see now look at that yellow where the blue has gone over it's changed to a green but the yellow is showing through as well so it has a different look to it than mixing the colors on the palette um, you still get the mixing of the colors but you also have the individual colors showing through so it gives you um, an interesting sort of a watercolor look and also the colors are even more vibrant this way I'm just going to touch up the blue up here because it's bothering me <laughs> um, now we'll do the magenta over the top and see what happens with that when it goes over that yellow I just think mixing colors this way is so beautiful it's almost like stained glass and though you're getting an orange there when you put the magenta over the yellow you're still seeing the yellow through you're still seeing some of that magenta so you're kind of getting three colors in one okay now I'm going to talk a little bit about optical color mixing which is actually juxtaposing colors on the paper um, even leaving some white in between if you want to and not really mixing the colors on the palette so I'm going to mix the same colors that I have in the past exercises, but this time I'm going to put little dots on the paper, and I'm just going to do this in an organic fashion. Um, they don't have to be in perfect rows. They don't have to be all the same value. In fact, it's kind of nice to have some lights and darks. And I'm just going to get all of our colors down um, so that we have a starting point. So there's all three of our primaries. And I've done two rows so that we can take the two primaries and put over each shape. So I'm gonna start with the magenta and go over the yellow here and just put little magenta dots in between the yellow and sometimes overlapping a little bit too. So the overall effect is when you stand back, um, the overall effect would be an orange kind of a color, but it just vibrates in your eye so that you get um, a lot of uh, like movement and action and light when you see these. If you're a fan of the post-impressionists, you would recognize this technique from especially Seurat. If you look very closely at any of his paintings, you see lots of tiny little dots juxtaposed together. And now some yellow over the blue. Now in doing this exercise, you probably notice that it doesn't matter so much which color you put down first if you put them down in equal amounts. But I just thought I would show you anyway so that you can kind of see that for yourself. Um, since I've already put the magenta over the blue, now I'm putting the blue over the magenta. You can see those next to each other and see there's not a huge difference. Now making another orange blob, I guess you'd say, by putting some of the yellow over the magenta. It's a little difference there because the magenta is darker. And in fact, I thought this one up here needed a little bit more contrast so I'm going to put some more darks in. A little bit more dark magenta up here. I didn't like how it got kind of a light pink. So I'd like you to take a look at what happens when I take one of these swatches and duplicate it on the computer and make a large field. If you stand back a ways you could see that this turns into green. That your eye sees it as green even though we know it's all yellow and blue dots. And when you do this, it really has a lot of vibrance and energy um, because of that juxtaposition of color and the contrast in color. So now I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to leave more white space between the dots and give it a little more air. And what this will do is make the color field a lot um, less dense than the other ones that we've done above. So you can see these are really spaced out. And now I've let it dry. 
So I'm going to take the magenta and this time I'm just going to go slightly over each one of these dots with the magenta so there's an overlap. So when you do a large field of this, if you stood back, you would see uh, orange with a lot of space around it. It'd be a lot less dense. So you can make um, stronger areas of color and weaker areas of color within your piece. So now a little bit blue over that magenta to make a little bit more of a purple color. So now I'm, I've got all three different ways of mixing my colors together. And I'm going to cut out my swatches from the different kinds of color mixing and kind of put them together to see how they look. And this is a nice thing to do. If you're doing this exercise, you might as well take these swatches and tape them into your sketchbook or your art journal and label them on the back as to which colors you used. And you might even put um, notes to yourself about how you mix that color so that if you want to use these colors in the future, you'll know exactly how you mixed them and how to make them again. Um, even though these are simple colors, it's just a good practice to get into so that when you start mixing more and more difficult colors, um, colors that require a lot more memory <laughs> as far as which color you used and how much of which kind, and even which brand of paint you used and which paper. And so that you have in your sketchbook or your art journal a map to follow when you're looking for colors to use in your paintings. And here I think it's good in these uh, layered glazed colors to try to put down which color you used first and which color you used second. You can look at this and kind of figure out how you did that so that you can repeat it if you want to. I'm going to put those down next to the other colors that they kind of match. And even though I used the exact same colors to mix these, look how different they look from the ones that I mixed on the palette. They have a little bit of a, a glow to them that the other ones, the other ones do have a little bit of a glow also just because these are such vibrant colors, but these have that three color combination where the two colors combine to make another color but you see all three shine through and I like that depth that the layering adds. So now we have all these beautiful swatches that are great examples of the three different kinds of color mixing that we've talked about today. We have mixing on the palette, mixing by using glazing technique, and optical color mixing. So you can mix and match these swatches, make a piece of art out of them, or you can put them in your sketchbook and label them like I spoke of before and use them as a map for, for whatever kind of artwork you'd like to do later. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for spending time with me today. And if you'd like to learn more about me and my artwork, please visit my webpage or my Facebook page. Also, please remember to like this video and hit the subscribe button below if you'd like to learn more art techniques, tips, and tricks.